Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our closing chapel uh, academic year 2022-2023. Um, and so uh, we're glad that you're here to join us. And uh, for me, there's no better way to uh, end just like we begin. And that's uh, here in church giving praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior. Uh, but before we do that, we have a couple things that we do every Wednesday in chapel, we will go ahead and stand and say our pledges, and then when we're done, I'm going to ask all of you to stand and face the cross as it enters in uh, to the uh, church area. So at this time, please stand as we go ahead and do our pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States.
Amen, everyone. Welcome to this last chapel of our school year. And as always, we begin it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for the last time, in Christ Jesus, we are making disciples for life. And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And behold, I We'll remain standing to sing our opening song, Hallelujah. Um, let's see. Will, will everybody out there in the congregation this first time, you're going to be the praise be the Lord part. Miss Ellen and I are going to sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, Miss Ellen, will you go stand on the other side of the room there, okay? Miss Ellen, why don't you stay? You be hallelujah side of the room. We're going to be praised be the Lord. One, two, ready, go. Praise be the Lord. Then you're going to stand when it's your turn to sing. Hallelujah, are you ready? One, two, ready, go. Praise be the Lord. We need to go a little faster. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mrs. K, I think I need a rest after that. I need a lie down. My heart's going too fast. Y'all can stay seated. We're going to hear God's word today from Matthew chapter 28. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. 
When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. This is, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you for reading that special passage to us all about making disciples. That's what we focus this whole year about. Uh, that's what we've been talking about all year long. And we have a special chance today because somebody with us today has decided that they want to be baptized. They want to be a follower of Jesus. They want to be a disciple of Jesus. And so I want to invite Jude. Uh, Jude, come on up. Uh, Jude Davis, come on up. Uh, Jude's mom and dad, come on up. Jude said a while ago, a couple weeks ago, that he wanted to be baptized. He liked seeing all these people up here uh, celebrating their baptismal birthdays. Isn't that right? Didn't you see that? And he said, I want to be baptized too. And he said, I believe that Jesus is my Savior, and so I think it's time for me to be baptized. And mom and dad said that was a great idea, and so we decided it would be fun to do it in chapel today. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Yeah. I think so, too. I think so, too. So, Jude, why don't you go ahead, go ahead and sit over here next to your parents. This is a fun day and an exciting day. So do you guys know why we baptize? Do you guys know why we baptize people? Why do we baptize people? What do you think? Yeah, they know that Jesus is risen from the dead. Jude, do, why, do you, why, do you, why do we baptize people? Do you know? So you can wash your sins away. That's a, great, I, that's a great answer. You know, Jesus actually told us that we should baptize people. We just read it, right? Izzy just read it for us. She said the disciples were told by Jesus to go and to make disciples of all nations. How? By baptizing people. By baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus had commanded them. And so, Jude, that's why we baptize people, because Jesus told us to do it. And it's a good thing to do. If we want to follow Jesus, then being baptized is a great place to start. And also, after Jesus ascended to heaven, he went to heaven. He, uh, his disciples went and they said, they said lots of different things, but they said, baptism saves you. Because, like you said, we all have sin. We all have sinful hearts, and we all have things that we do that God doesn't want us to do, and yet we do them anyways, and so we need to be washed of our sins. We need to be cleaned of all of that, and Jesus does that, and he does it through baptism. And so, Jude, I'm excited for you today, uh, because today is going to be a day when your sins are washed away, and Jesus uh, takes your heart, and you become part of God's family. So all of that is why uh, we baptize people. So I want to talk to mom and dad for just a second because mom and dad have, have a role to play in this, right? You guys have done a great job so far of, of teaching Jude all about who Jesus is, about bringing him to grace and letting him learn all about Jesus and all about how his Savior died for him and lives again for him and about how, how Jesus cleanses Jude's sin. But it, it's your job to continue to do that, to keep bringing him to places where he can learn about who Jesus is. Keep putting people in his life who can teach him about Jesus and who can love him the way Jesus does and who can be spiritual counselors for him. And so it's your job to continue that and to make sure his faith is nurtured and it grows so that he can continue to grow up and confess faith uh, on his own, just like he is today. Uh, so mom and dad, do you gladly and willingly intend to do that? And say yes, with the help of God. All right. And I talked to Melissa a while ago about who Jude's baptismal sponsor should be. And I don't know if she told you, but she told me that she wants the staff of Grace Lutheran School to be Jude's baptism sponsors. And so, uh, just so you know what your role is before you commit to that, uh, baptism sponsors uh, have a very important role in, in someone's life. So baptism sponsors are uh, spiritual aids. They're people who Jude can turn to uh, for counsel and for help and for wisdom. People who promise to pray for Jude and to care for him in his spiritual walk of faith. People that nurture him and they're there to answer questions that he might have when he goes to mom and dad. And he doesn't want to go to mom and dad, but he wants to go to you instead. And so your role is to continue to nurture his faith as well. Answer questions for him and be kind of uh, wise counselors in, in matters of faith and spirituality. And so 
staff of Grace Lutheran School, do you gladly and willingly intend to do this, then say yes with the help of God? Yes, yes with the help of God. All right, Jude, there are a lot of people here who care for you and who love you and who have just promised to keep caring for you for their whole life. And so, Jude, I'm going to, uh, I've got some oil here, and so I'm going to mark you the sign of the cross on your forehead and on your heart as one who is redeemed by Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. And so, Jude... I know that you've told me that Jesus is your Savior, but we've just got a couple of questions that we're going to talk through real quick before, before we have you baptized, okay? And they're going to be up here on the screen, and so Jude's going to answer them. Mom and Dad, you guys can answer on his behalf as well. And we are all, as people who believe the same thing that Jude does, we're all going to answer uh, along with Jude. So Jude, uh, my first question is, do you renounce the devil? Do you reject the devil and everything he does, all his works and all his ways? and say, I do renounce them. I do boy. And Jude, what about what do you believe? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, just like it says in the Apostles' Creed? Then say, yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. It's right here too, if you want to read along with us. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Here we go. Jude, do you believe in the Holy Spirit too? Yes. yes. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And Jude, do you want to be baptized? Mom, Dad, do you want Jude to be baptized? Awesome. Hey, Jude, I'm going to have you stand up right up here on the steps. That way you can get over the baptismal font a little bit easier. Everybody can see you. Mom and Dad can see you. Mom and Dad, what's Jude's full name? Jude Riker Davis. I'll go ahead and have you lean over the baptismal font. There you go. Jude Riker Davis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to pray for you, Jude. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jude. We thank you for the faith that you have given him. We thank you that he has confessed your son Jesus with his own lips here today. We thank you that he's committed to following you. And Lord, we thank you for all the people who have in helped instill this faith in him. We thank you for his parents who have taught him who you are and your love for him. We thank you for his teachers who have nurtured that love and told him about you as well. Thank you for his friends who have taught him about what loving like you looks like. And we thank you, Lord, for you. Uh, for your Holy Spirit who's delivered this faith into Jude's heart today. Lord, we ask that you be with him, continue to strengthen this faith, help him to learn and grow about you, and so that he can make disciples just like he has been made a disciple here today. Um, Father, be with his mom and dad, and be with all of us as we continue to strengthen this faith in Jude and help him along his journey of faith, answering questions and teaching him all about who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, so Jude, we also have a special candle we're lighting for you today. It's being lit by the Christ candle. This candle represents Jesus' love and his light and his life uh, that will never go out. And so you're getting this candle today as a reminder that Jesus is alive in your heart. 
uh, right now. And so I invite you to, to light this anytime uh, you're feeling like it on great days when you want to celebrate with Jesus or even on low days uh, when you're not having a good day, but you want to be reminded that you are a child of God and nothing is ever going to change that. But I especially invite you to, to uh, light that on May 26th every year to remind you of the day that you were baptized. Obviously, mom and dad should probably be there when you light that candle. But <laughs> Go ahead and do that whenever you want to remember that you are a baptized child of God and he loves you and he will always be with you. So you can go ahead and blow that out here real quick. We're going to thank God for Jude one more time. Thank you, Ms. Clementson and Ms. L and Ms. Casey for helping us out. All right, for our final message for our closing chapel today, it's been based upon our theme for this year, the academic year 2022-2023. What's been our theme? Making disciples. Where did we get that? Did we just make that up? No, that came from our Lord Jesus. Look at this Bible passage right here. 
And we've heard this a couple times today already, all through the year. You've probably memorized this one. I hope you have. Let's all say it together. Go therefore and make disciples of all, <coughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you all to the end of the age. Who? Oh, 19 and 20. That's right. You remember where that's in the Bible. Now, who said those words? That was, look at this next slide. Who's our leader? It is Jesus. He's the greatest teacher to ever walk upon the earth. He came from God. In fact, he is God. God's own son. He's a great teacher, but he's also our Lord. That means he's over all things and our Savior. He went to the cross and he died for you and me. And he wants everyone to follow him. To follow him in the ways of God for life, even eternal life. That's being his disciple. And the main thing as a disciple is what? To follow Jesus. To believe in him and do what he tells us to do. To follow his word. To follow his instructions. And that's what we've been doing this year when we've been looking at other disciples in the Bible. Look at this next slide. In fact, we talked about being a disciple today. Being baptized for forgiveness because disciples are made by baptism and teaching. And you've been learning that. Learning Jesus' teachings and then following what he says all the way through this life, even to heaven. Because he came down from heaven, and after dying for us and rising again, he went back up to heaven. And we get to follow him all the way to heaven. And this year we've been learning about different disciples. And one class got to start us off. And that was Ms. Ennis 8th grade class, and they told us about which disciple? Peter. And then after that, Mr. McGee's 7th grade class told us about Andrew. And then after we learned about Andrew as a disciple following Jesus, Ms. Lutton, 6th grade class, told us about James, the Apostle James. And after that, Ms. Navarro's 6th grade class told us about John. We learned about the disciple John. That was way back in the fall, early November. Maybe you remember that. And then, getting into late November, Ms. Navarro's fifth grade class remind us about being what kind of disciples? Thankful disciples. And it was a season of Thanksgiving. We learned and were reminded to thank God for all things. And then we had our Christmas programs where many of you were up here singing those beautiful Christmas songs about the birth of our Savior, Jesus, and how He came to us. And then we took a little break from school. We came back in January, and it was Ms. Price, fifth grade class. And they told us about another disciple. Who was that? Philip. Right. And then Ms. Lincolnbach's fourth grade class told us about Bartholomew or Nathaniel. He had two names. A Greek name and a Hebrew name. But that was the same disciple, Bartholomew and Nathaniel, and maybe you remember that. And then Miss Oxer's fourth grade class told us about Thomas. Right, how Thomas needed um, help to believe in God. Jesus had to show him that he's truly risen from the dead. And then we also had Ms. Palamaki's class, third grade class, reminding us about Matthew, the tax collector. And some of you, your third grade uh, Ms. Palamaki's class, acted that out. Matthew at the tax collector's booth. And then Ms. Thompson's third grade class told us about James the Younger. Remember, there were two James. And some of you have younger brothers and sisters, and James was a younger brother. And we talked about that, and he gets to follow Jesus. And then, Ms. Sears, second grade class, had a tough task. Yeah, 
telling us about Judas Iscariot. And boys and girls, listen to this one. This one stood out to me because Judas wasn't a good disciple. He betrayed Jesus. He handed him over to be crucified. And we talked about being a faithful friend. And you know who the most faithful friend is? Jesus himself. He will never betray you or me, never tell lies about us or do us harm. Jesus is faithful, and we learn that from that disciple, Judas Iscariot. And then Ms. Adams, second grade class, told us about Thaddeus. And Ms. Winchester's first grade class told us about Jesus being our good shepherd. He cares for us when we follow him. Which class do you think comes, came next? <coughs> Ms. Lingley's first grade class, Simon the Zealot. And lots of smiles on that picture because Simon was excited about Jesus. And then, here's another one. Oh, Ash Wednesday. Do you remember that? Pastor Moore taught us to repent. That means recognize that we've done wrong and say we're sorry and turn to do what's right. And many of you came right up here and received some ashes on your foreheads and the sign of a cross that we remember to turn to Jesus. We're his disciples. And I know you remember this one for Good Friday. We had a special Good Friday service of darkness where things got dark and we heard the whole story of Jesus and what he did for you and me on the cross because he loves us so much that he endured pain and death to save us. But then Mr. Rotman reminded us he's been risen from the dead on Easter Sunday because it's all about Jesus and what he's done for us. And then Ms. Grothaus class talked to us about Jesus being our helper for life and he gives us his own spirit, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's your helper for life. He's always with you even though we can't see him. And then Ms. Davis class. As disciples told us about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. That's right, you remember. Now what was the purpose of learning all of these disciples? It wasn't just to know about these people, but about how they followed Jesus and taught us to follow Jesus. They were told to make disciples of all nations and they help make disciples of us by teaching people and we've learned their teachings and you had a great disciple of Jesus in your class your teacher who is a disciple following Jesus making disciples and your teacher taught you the teachings of Jesus and the love of Jesus what he did for you on the cross everybody say thank you teacher thank you teacher Yes, we are thankful for our teachers. And now, look at this next slide. We make disciples. And that was go and make disciples. And we've collected special gifts this year to help support missions. I want to remind you what you did. You helped support um, some children in a Lutheran school that lost part of their school with Hurricane Ian in South Florida. And you helped support some students who lost their whole school in Ukraine. And they've been re, um, displaced into areas like Poland and Romania. And we help them out by sending them some money so they could purchase materials to learn about Jesus. And we, that is our role. We want to share the love of Jesus. Some of you did this with the little crosses. Remember what those, the words, three words on that little cross that it says? You remember, God loves you. And you gave those away, and that was special. Because so maybe someone was having a bad day, and they remembered that God, who can't be seen, loves them. And gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for them. And here is the promise I'm going to leave you with on the last day of school. Look at this next slide. Jesus said, at the very end of Go and Make Disciples, what did he say? Everybody, you all... 
Everybody say that again with me. I am with you always. Who said that? Jesus said that to you. He's always with you. All through the summer, when you wake up, when you go through the day, when you lay your head down at night, when you're doing fun things, when you're doing chores around your house or helping your family, He is with you sometimes, no, always. And here's the last slide for the day. You are Jesus' disciple. You believe in Him, you've learned His teaches, your teachings, you're following Him, and you are making disciples of others for life. Even eternal life and all the way to heaven. Everybody clap their hands. Yay. That's for you being a disciple of Jesus, and we praise God. We already got to say what we believe with the Apostles' Creed when Jude was baptized today. So we're going to all stand up and we're going to turn to God for prayer. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this excellent year. We thank you for the awesome things that we've learned together. We thank you for all the ways that we've grown together. We thank you for how our faith has increased and how... We've grown spiritually to how we've learned about your love for us and your care for us and all that you teach us to do and to obey so that we can go and make disciples just like people uh, are helping us to be disciples. Uh, Father, we thank you for, for Jude for being baptized today and for the faith that you've given to him and welcoming him into your family. We thank you for everybody who was baptized this year. Uh, so many people uh, wanted to join your family and you welcomed them in baptism. We are so grateful for that. Uh, we thank you for all that you've done that we know about this year and all the things that have gone uh, undercover, those things that we haven't noticed, those things that we don't know that happened, but you still did them all. Uh, Father, we thank you for an awesome year together, and we ask that you would be with us this summer. Uh, help us to continue to grow as disciples who follow you. Uh, help us to continue to make other people into disciples who follow you. And Lord, bring us back here or bring us to wherever you have for us in the future. Uh, so that we can be disciples wherever we are because we know that you will be with us always, um, no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray our special prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Christ Jesus, we are disciples for life. So may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We're going to stay standing to sing our closing song for today. And right before this closing song, I'm just going to declare the academic year of our Lord, 2022. 2023 to be closed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord with trumpet sounds. Praise the Lord with trumpet sounds. Trumpet. the 
Good morning. Thank you. Um, welcome to the last day of school. I don't know about you, but every time this year, every time this time of the year, um, I kind of get a little emotional, I kind of get a little somber, but in some cases I get really excited. And I don't know if it's because it's summertime or if it's because I get to see how much growth has occurred during the course of the year. Let me tell you what a year it has been. What an exciting day it is knowing that we are going to celebrate growth and be able to do so with family and friends. God has definitely been with us throughout the year, but it doesn't stop there because we know God's going to go with us wherever we go. If you look and reflect back on the year, every one of us probably has one, two, five, maybe 15 or more stories that we can share. This year has provided us with growth 
in academics. Physically, you can definitely see that from day one pictures and last day pictures. Um, we've grown in our socializing with others, and we've grown spiritually as God has been leading us. Well, today we not only say goodbye to 22-23 school year, but more importantly, we give thanks to God for the year we had and the many gifts and abilities that we were able to use because he's blessed us with them. I thank you for being here with us today as we celebrate all of these accomplishments, uh, especially those that the students have been able to complete and accomplish. Again, what a year it has been. And I want to start by saying congratulations to all of you students on a great year of learning, growing, and serving. I also wanted to thank Mrs. Adams, um, who will not be returning next year, uh, but is seeking God's will and doing other things. And so we thank you for your time and your dedication in serving the many students and families you have here at Grace Lutheran. I pray God's continual blessings on you as you follow the path he lays before you. I also want to thank the faculty and staff who give of their time, their time, their time, their time, and their talents every day in making sure that the students continue to grow by challenging them. I probably don't say it enough, but I do appreciate everything you do for me, for the church and school, and for the families that allow us the opportunity to serve God's children. I pray that you have a restful summer, full of time to rejuvenate. Maybe also spend time with family and friends. I thank you for being here at Grace Lutheran, as it truly is an honor and a blessing to be able to call you colleagues, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, and to walk alongside of you every day. Thank you again for coming, and uh, as we begin the next phase of this morning, we remember to give thanks and praise to our Lord and Savior because he is truly the one that gives us all our gifts and abilities. To him we give glory. At this time I ask Mr. Peterson to come forward. Thank you. Good morning students and parents and friends. Uh, academic growth is one of the greatest things that we've observed this year and probably one of the most important academic skills that you learn students is reading. And we've watched all year as you've grown in your reading skills. It's been shown time and time again that uh, by improving your reading skills, you can improve the chances of success in your future academic and professional lives. So uh, one way that we promote that skill of reading is through our Accelerated Reader Program. And so I've got some awards for those students that this year uh, earned at least a hundred points in our accelerated reader program and there's a lot of you this year I'm really proud of the efforts that you had and uh, we we had so many of you that we had to divide up our days at Dairy Queen and at, at the bowling alley for our AR parties but that that went really well and was a lot of fun we hope all of you are encouraged to uh, try to earn those AR points next year as you do your reading. As I call out the first students here, this is our 100-point club, at least 100 points during the course of the year. We'll have you stand right where you are. Your teachers have your certificates. And uh, if you can hold your applause, please, until I get through all of the list of our 100-point club, uh, and then we'll recognize them all at once at the end. So first graders in the 100-point club were Liam McGee, Elijah Palmer, Nola Rumble, Zakara Simon, Alexei Zabrezhne, and Madden Reiner. In second grade, we had Forrest Arnold, Cole Cochran, Deontay Bailey Spence, 
Liam Collins, Greenlee Ferguson, General Garrett, Abigail Lewis, Jonah Ritchie, Hannah Savant, and Braden Varner. In third grade, Sadie Campbell, Charlotte Shaw, Theron Brown, Luke Emanuel, Gianna Garza, Cale Kilgore, Desmond McGee, Kieran Pinch, and Mason Williams. In fourth grade, Jaden Edwards, Trinity Ferguson, Ella Price, Warren Savant, Emma Spence, and DeAndre Bailey Spence. Oh, and Jolie, Jolie Vanaski. In fifth grade, Carson Painter, Sylvia Ulrich, Hunter Arnold, Mariana Cross dos Santos, Amelia Palmer. In sixth grade, Ryan Cross dos Santos, Caden Handley, Colin Irby, Peyton McMillan, Reagan Sisson, Stella Taylor, and Grayson Vanaski. And then in the other half of our sixth grade, Jason Beyer, Cadence Diaz, Charlie LaFan, Ava McCraney, Kira McMillan, Delilah Rednock, Carson Spence, Grace Strohmeyer, and Owen Windham. In seventh grade, Lily Betts, Andre Cordero, Jackson Gherkin, Judson Hagman, Aiden Hall, Gavin King, Landon Libertor, Alana Martinez, Piper Ostra, and Adrian Phillips. And then in eighth grade, and this was the class that had the highest percentage of students in the 100 point club, good job eighth graders, Noah Beyer, Bryce Booker, Olivia Carlson, Ivan Chow, Sarah Lynn Cooper, Kendall Garrett, Noah Hammock, Alyssa Herrera, Isabella Liparota, Gavin Martin, Alyssa McGinnis, Tony McEntee, Brady Moxham, Dio Ortiz, Avon Ray, Kaylin Smith, Nia Stewart, and Aaron Woods. Congratulations all of our 100 Point Club members. So the next group is a smaller group, not quite so lengthy, but there were a number of students that earned at least 250 AR points during the course of the school year. And in that group, we've got Katherine Davis, Matteo Ortiz, Dean Savant, Ayla Newbrand, Alex White. If you guys would come on up front here, we've got your certificates up here, and uh, a little medal for you. And I'm going to have you guys stay up here a second because we have two more important people to join you. We had two students that uh, earned over 500 points during the course of this school year. And uh, the first one I'm going to mention is our sixth grader because she did an awesome job. She smashed the record, and, and I say smashed, because uh, the old record for the number of points in a school year was about 800. She ended up with over 1,000. <laughs> AR points for the course of the year. So that sets a really high goal for y'all. But uh, with over 500 points, we had Chloe Warshower. <laughs> and I'm going to mention Chloe again in a few seconds. But the other person is an eighth grader that had over 500 points for the year, and that was Layla Stalinski. <laughs> we 
Now, one of the special things that happens with AR, over the course of your years here, we keep track of how many points you have total over all of the years. And I haven't had anyone reach this level in the last couple of years, so I haven't had to make this presentation. But this year I have two students that uh, earned the level to reach our Reading Hall of Fame, which is 1,500 points over the course of their career here at Grace. And you can probably guess which two students these are, <laughs> because Chloe almost did it in one year. <laughs> but uh, Chloe, Chloe and Layla, congratulations on making it into the Reading Hall of Fame. So since academics are so important, we uh, honor those students that did well in their, uh, all of their academic work during the course of the year. And we have three levels of awards that we give out uh, to students for their academic achievement. The first academic awards are uh, for our first graders and for all of those students who uh, had a GPA that was equivalent to a B average or higher uh, with no D's or F's at all on their report card anywhere. And uh, those are our certificates of merit. Now, there are a lot of people with certificates of merit. So again, I'm gonna ask you if you can hold your applause. We'll recognize all of them once uh, we finish calling out names. But uh, we also, are going to uh, have you guys just stay at your seats. Your teachers have these awards, so they'll pass them out to you at your seats. Uh, but please stand up as we call your name. Uh, I'm gonna start at the top here. And in eighth grade, we have Maylee Allward, Bryce Booker, and Alyssa Herrera. In seventh grade, Colin Alderman, Judson Hagman, Aiden Hall, Landon Libertor, Caden Hancock, Sophia Martinez, Bentley Massey, Macy Smith, Carson Spence, Alexander White, Cameron Wingett, and that was my sixth graders there, seventh and sixth graders. In fifth grade, George Dinkle, Aubrey Garcia, Pierce Goad, Madison Holland, Roger Ruiz, Hudson String, Sylvia Ulrich, and Hunter Arnold, and Zora Desir. In fourth grade, uh, Geranely Ramos Murillo, Jackson Graham, Genesis Pierantoni, Wyatt Thomas. In third grade, Mason Bailey Clore, Sadie Campbell, Levi Hammock. Brylin Ingram, Jackson Land, Madeline Maroney, McKinley Johnson, Giovanni Liparota, Abigail McCraney, Kennedy Miller, Austin Wampler, Kipton Wingett, and Ava Zabrezhnik. And in first grade, Blake Allison, Jalexia Altador, Josiah Antoine, Catherine Bentley, Miles Calderon, Christian Carbone, Alexandra Delg Delgadillo, Jack Duncan, Ezekiel Giles, Nash Gwynn, Carter Henriksen, Annalie LaFan, John Locke, Liam McGee, Olivia Oliver, Elijah Palmer, Miles Reagan, Nola Rumble, Zakara Simon, 
Keaton Wingett, Alexa Zabrezhne, Marley Coates, Jackson Chrysostomo, Maya Desir, Cadence DeVry, Arabella Emanuel, Anari Fields, Elijah Giles, Pierce Haranda, Kinley Harvey, Alana Hicks, Timothy Holland, Nicholas Lintz, Melanie Morris, Brennelly Olivo, Peyton Phillips, Madden Reiner, Walter Rivers, Carter Smith, Wes Ulrich, Carson Wentz, and Preston Wiley. What a great list. Good job, guys. The honor level of awards is for those students that had a, a GPA equivalent to an A average throughout the course of the year, again with no Ds or Fs. And again, we have a lengthy list of students here. So we're going to recognize you. You can stand up at your seats, and uh, we'll give you all a round of applause as we finish. Uh, let's see. Starting again at the top with our eighth graders, Sarah Lynn Cooper, Kendall Garrett, Isabella Liparota, Anthony McEntee, Brady Moxham, Dio Ortiz, Avon Ray, Kaylin Smith, and Ashanti Stewart. In seventh grade, Hudson Fuller, Abbott Nicholas, William Noble, Piper Ostra, and Adrian Phillips. In sixth grade, Shea Arnold, Torin Brown, Ryan Cross Dos Santos, Colin Irby, Peyton McMillan, John Schaffner, Stella Taylor, Jackson Whitaker, Ellie Zeely, Katie Diaz, Brooke Furland, Charlie LaFan, Ava McCraney, Ayla Newbrand, Jackson Palamaki, Delilah Rednock, Grace Strohmeyer, and Owen Windham. In fifth grade, Gabriel Franco, Carson Painter, Nevaeh Timmons, Mariana Crosto Santos, Chloe Kelly, Cameron Moxham, Amelia Palmer, Kristen Scott, and Slater Werner. In fourth grade, DeAndre Bailey Spence, Skylar Bueno, Bianca Delgadillo, Sage DeRoser, Azalyn Dew, Charles Hermelbrock, Bradley Proctor, Amaya Reed, Dean Savant, Jolie Vanaski, Bryson Adkinson, Kinley Bryan, Jaden Edwards, Ryland Gillespie, Peyton Hill, Chandler Ingram, Bailey Massey, uh, Riley Mickelshin, Warren Savant, and Brylin Scott. In third grade, Wills Cross, Declan Kelly, Aliyah McEntee, Mateo Ortiz, Charlotte Shaw, Landon Britton, Luke Emanuel, Gianna Garza, Luke Hammock, Adelie Ingram, Armaya Johnson, Kale Kilgore, Desmond McGee, Kieran Pinch, and in second grade, Carolyn Anderson, Jonathan Bentley, Bryce Daniels, Parker Durham, Sydney Garcia, William Gatlin, Carolyn Hermelbrock, Messiah Marilis, Emma Wynn, Addison Shaw, Abigail Adams, Jasmine Arnold, Jackson Boyd, Liam Collins, Catherine Davis, Lucy Landsgrainer, Abigail Lewis, Mackenzie Murchison, Hannah Savant, and Warren Taylor. Good job to all of our students with A averages.
The final level of award just takes it up just a tiny notch because for our awards of excellence, you have students that are all A's in everything all year. So that's, that's a pretty amazing achievement. They didn't slip up once even a little bit. All A's all year, every quarter, every semester grade for all the subjects that they do. So uh, I'm going to start at the bottom here, start with my second graders. And we're going to have you guys come up to the front here so that we can recognize all of you for your hard work. So here we go. Brayton Varner, Celine Rodriguez Aquino, Jonah Ritchie, General Garrett, Harper Fuller, Greenlee Ferguson, Laney Williams, Layla Smith, Sadie Parsons, Adeline Ortiz, Mary Claire McGill, Jacob Freeman, Cole Cochran, and Forrest Arnold. In third grade, Mason Williams, Theron Brown, and Talon Brown. In fourth grade, Carden Stevens, Emma Spence, Trinity Ferguson, Cole Windham, Ella Price. In fifth grade, Sydney Stalinsky. In sixth grade, Chloe Warshower. In seventh grade, Gavin King and Jackson Gherkin. And in eighth grade, Layla Stalinsky, Noah Hammock, Ivan Chow, Olivia Carlson. Congratulations on all of your hard work. And if we can have you guys turn around here and face the front, we'll get a quick picture of, of you all. Down. Huh. Okay. Yep, thank you. Sorry about that, Ellen Cole. I don't know what happened. Oh, your teachers got them. That's what happened. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Miss <Ms>. Oxer. <laughs> we were getting worried up here. <laughs> um, kindergarten through second grade. Had a great time working with you in computer classes all year, uh, but you guys at this point get to dismiss and head back to your classroom for some activities there. Uh, eighth graders, once the younger students are out of the way, we're gonna have you come up in the first two rows here. And eighth grade parents, your family and friends can also come join us in the empty pews up front here as soon as we get the younger ones out of the way. Uh, eighth graders, if you want to make your way down front, please. Eighth graders, come on down to the front two rows.
And any of the eighth grade parents, if you want to come down in front on either side here, you can come. Go ahead, let's be seated, please. All right, we will go ahead and continue on with our uh, awards today. Um, the next award or awards that we will go ahead and uh, present will be our salutatorian and valedictorian awards, uh, which goes to uh, eighth grade students. Uh, the first set will be the salutatorian award uh, which goes to the eighth grade student who has the second highest GPA over three years in middle school so sixth seventh and eighth grade uh, this year we have three of them as I call your name I'd like you to come forward um, and I'll give you a certificate and then I want you to stand up here and then we'll wait and then kind of do the uh, valedictorian so the salutatorian awards go to Ivan Chow Olivia Carlson and Isabella Liparota. Come forward, please. The valedictorian award goes to an eighth grade student who has the highest GPA over three years of middle school. Again, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Uh, this year, we have two, and they are Brady Moxham and Layla Stalinski. Congratulations. Congratulations again. At this time, at this time, I'll call up Pastor Rich. This is the Fruit of the Spirit Award, and a number of years ago, maybe like 40 years ago, there was some parents who brought their children to our school, Bob Ferentz and, and Bob and Shirley Curtis Ferentz, and they were so impressed with what their children learned of their character building here at Grace Lutheran, godly characteristics like the fruits of the Spirit. And listen to these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that those qualities were developed in their children to the school, and they made an award available every year that would honor some students who have exemplified those character qualities. And so the Fruit of the Spirit Award this year goes to two students, Aaron Woods and Anthony McEntee.
In order to present the next award, uh, which is the Anderson Geography Award, we've got Mr. McGee, our geography teacher, coming forward. Uh, the seventh grade geography award goes to a student who is always academically focused. She always gives her personal best in the classroom. This student also cares about her peers, and she wants to see them succeed just as much as herself. Adrienne Phillips. Um, this geography uh, award goes to you. Uh, thank you for always going above and beyond, pushing yourself to be better. Continue to be a role model for your sisters. Congratulations on winning the award. The next awards are given out by the American Legion uh, post eight. And uh, when they give these awards out, they look for specific qualities. And uh, I'll kind of highlight those qualities. The first one is courage. Bravery in the face of opposition and danger, determination to do right without public applause and regardless of personal advantage. Honor, highly developed moral character. Moral excellence, strength and stability of character, high standards of conduct, devotion to duty, adherence to truth, keen sense of what is right, practice of clean speech and thoughts. Leadership, ability to lead and to accomplish through group action, ability to work in harmony and in unison with other leaders in accomplishing group results, desire and ability to fill the voids in the lives of others caused by timidity, illness, and other handicaps. Patriotism, an ideal of loyal Americanism, religious tolerance, righteous freedom, and the willingness to defend our flag against enemies, foreign and domestic. Scholarship, attainments in school studies, quality of school work, reflecting the fine traits of industry, perseverance, efficiency, and intelligence. And finally, service, kindness, unselfishness, fellowship, protection of the weak, promotion of the interest and the welfare of the associates, and constructive aid for the support of school and community. And in this category by the awards of the American Legion, there are two levels. Level two, we have Bryce Booker and Olivia Carlson. Congratulations. <laughs> And then level one, we have Ivan Chow and Isabella Liparota. Reverend Dr. August Bernthal was our first full-time pastor here. He served for 50 years, 1950 to 2000. Before becoming a pastor, he served our country in World War II. And there is a special award we like to give out um, in honor of him, the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. And so it's not only being a servant of God upon this earth to other people, and serving our country, but serving others. So veterans of foreign wars went to other places to fight for those people and to help them out. And two students who've exhibited qualities 
of service to our country, service to God upon this earth, but seeing a need and just helping out, no matter who that person was, but a great service to others. Avon Ray and Layla Stalinsky. Mr. McGee doesn't only teach geography, he also teaches history, and so he's going to present a couple of our history awards. I'm going to present a few awards, but before I do, uh, I wanted to say a few words to the eighth grade graduating class. Uh, thank you, eighth graders, for always giving your personal best in class. You pushed me to be a better teacher, and you always brought the intensity in class every single day. One of the brightest classes I've really have ever had. Um, always brought your A game, so thank you uh, for showing up every single day. Um, so there's going to be three awards that I hand out. The first one's going to be the DAR, which stands for Daughters of the American Revolution. Uh, this is the Citizenship Award. Um, uh, sh this student consistently walks into my room with a positive attitude, and her spirit is honestly infectious. Um, this student represents the best of Grace Lutheran School, and thus is a perfect representation of the DAR Citizenship Award. There's no doubt about it. Kendall Garrett, you are going to be... She is going to be missed uh, next year. Make sure you come back and visit us and bring your older brother as well. The second award I'm presenting this year uh, actually already went to Brady Moxham. Brady's essay, which was written in history class, won him the DAR History Essay Contest earlier in the school year, and we were able to celebrate with the local DAR members at a nice luncheon that they held in his honor. Brady, you are an amazing young man. And boy, am I going to miss talking sports with you each day in the classroom. Congratulations again on winning the DAR essay. And there's three others that actually participated in the, in the award, and then they can come up as well. That's Layla Stalinsky, Kaylin Smith, and Isabella Liberata. You guys can come up too. Uh, and then the last award I am presenting goes to the eighth grade uh, student who has, this is called the eighth grade DAR History Award. It goes to a student who had the highest academic grade throughout the entire school year. And this award goes to Layla Stalinsky. <laughs> Good job. 
job, congratulations. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Ennis, the uh, science teacher here at Grace, and we have two science awards. Uh, the first science award is the just make sure is the Kyber Science Award, and the Kyber Award is presented uh, to a student whose uh, dedication, aptitude, and diligence um, in scientific studies brings that student to the top of the class. Uh, this student shows a real zeal for every topic that we cover and on it, just a general excitement for learning. So the Kyber Award this year goes to Layla Stalinsky. Congratulations. And our second, our second science award um, is the STREAM Award. And this award is for a student um, who ha excels in science, tech science, technology, religion, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, and this student has earned this award because he demonstrates creative thinking, uh, innovative decision making, and adaptive skill for project challenges. Uh, the student is a leader in academic areas all throughout STREAM. Uh, this year, we recognize Ivan Chow. In the academic area of math, I'll be presenting the Arbeiter uh, Math Award. The Arbeiters were teachers at Grace here for many years, and, a, and especially Mrs. Bonnie Arbeiter uh, was acknowledged for all of the great work she did in preparing students for algebra in high school and, and in uh, teaching them Algebra One. those that were getting, doing Algebra One for high school credit. And I, I have the honor of uh, being able to follow in her footsteps there, working with the algebra students, uh, doing algebra one and algebra two for high school credit. Uh, this year, we have two students that are going to be recognized for their uh, work in math. Uh, they actually push each other quite a bit. Uh, I would say it's a competition, but it's very friendly because they work together really well. And they're also very helpful uh, with other students, whether it's uh, other Algebra II students or other Algebra students. Uh, they're consistently willing to uh, teach and support the others as they're learning. Maybe we've got a couple teachers there in the future. I don't know. But our Arbeiter Math Award this year will be going to Layla Stalinsky and Brady Moxham. <laughs> You know you've got good math students where when you make mistakes, they're catching it before you even you know, get on to the next step. So <laughs> thanks, Brady and, and Layla, for all of your hard work. And now for our language arts awards, we've got our language arts teachers, Mrs. Navarro and Mrs. Lutton, to present those awards. Uh, Mrs. Lutton and I are honored to present the Barron's Language Arts Award. Uh, Mr. Barron was a teacher here at Grace as well, 
and language arts includes English, literature, grammar, and composition writing, just to name a few things. There are two students who have shown exceptional skills in this area. They never settled for anything less than perfect. They have been a blessing to teach, along with the other eighth graders as well. The Barron's Language Arts Award goes to Brady Moxham and Layla Stolinski. Mr. Beerwagen was someone who was known around our school uh, as being the person that you always go, needed to go to if you needed help with something. And so we created a number of years ago a special award in his honor, uh, the Beerwagen School Service Award. Now we don't always have students that we really feel exemplify this award, and so it's not always presented each year. But this year, we have a number of students who have excelled in service, as you've already heard. And, and we thought there was one here that really would fit the bill as far as the Beer Wagon Service Award and being there to be able to help uh, as needed. And uh, some of you might know him better for his escapades in the Lion's Roar video announcements. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, Ivan and Avon, but Avon, you're the one that's going to be honored with the uh, Beer Wagon School Service Award. Come on up, Mrs. Ferguson. Our art teacher will be presenting our art award. Good morning. I am presenting the Noise Art Award. It has been a tremendous pleasure to have this talented young artist in class this year. Sometimes I don't think she realizes how talented she is, but she never ceases to amaze me. Join me in congratulating Kaylin Smith. And this year, for the first time, we're going to present a, a, an award for music. So Ms. Clemenson, our music teacher, is going to make that presentation. Good morning, students and our honored guest. When in our music God is glorified and adoration leaves no room for pride, it is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. These words by Fred Pratt Green demonstrate how music builds Christian community and unites people in all times and places in glorifying God. At Grace Lutheran School, music is not just an academic course, but an integral part of our Christian worship, fellowship, and witness. Not only did the recipient of this year's Outstanding Musician Award excel in music academically, but she also shared her gifts with the school and the church through her musical leadership in Grace Middle School Chorus and inviting others to join the song as well. It is my honor to present this year's Outstanding Musician Award to Olivia Carlson.
I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize our fourth grade classes for their outstanding performance at the Lutheran Music Festival uh, in February this year. While your superior rating was well earned and a major accomplishment, I am most proud of your perseverance, the dedication and soul that you gave to the music, and the gospel message that you shared with all who witnessed your song and signs at the festival, at the church in the school, and in the Winter Haven community. We also owe a debt of gratitude to Mrs. Linkenbach and Ms. Oxar for the time, patience, and love that they poured into their students in preparing them for this performance as well. I'm grateful for your partnership in this endeavor. Fourth grade, if you would please stand and please join me in thinking and congratulating the fourth grade class for their amazing accomplishment this year. Thank you, fourth graders. Great job. Our school sponsors a branch of the National Junior Honor Society uh, and seventh graders and eighth graders through their academic work and their community service have the ability to uh, enter into that uh, chapter, our chapter of the National Junior Honor Society. Those students are expected to earn volunteer hours but each year we have some students that go above and beyond in earning volunteer hours within the school and within the community. And this year I'd like to recognize the uh, top volunteer for the year in number of hours served, and that would be Leila Stalinsky. <laughs> So one of the things that I do with the eighth graders uh, in computer class is I have them participate in a competition sponsored by the uh, Ameri Schola American Scholastic Achievement League. And basically they provide a, a vehicle of testing that allows us to recognize uh, students that uh, score above average on their yearly test. And this test is interesting because it's not just academics, but current events and cultural things. And so uh, you really have to be a well-rounded person to, uh, to do well on that test. And it gives us a way to recognize some students uh, for their, their knowledge and their expertise above and beyond just the academic. This year we have I think it's eight students that uh, scored above average in the American Scholastic Achievement League Scholastic Challenge. And I'll call you guys up here and I'll save the uh, top one for last. Uh, Isabella Liparota, Kaylin Smith, Noah Hammock, Brady Moxham, Ivan Chow, Avon Ray, Noah Beyer are some of our award winners there. And our top score earner was Layla Stalinsky. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Here, Layla, to get another one of these.
Our next award, uh, is each year we recognize students or eighth graders that demonstrate uh, dedication and determination in their academic studies. Uh, this year we have two awards to present and both of these ladies regularly lead their classmates in asking questions. And if you've all been in school, you know how difficult it is sometimes to ask questions. And these uh, two ladies just demonstrate the willingness to ask, other, ask questions and give others the confidence to do the same. Uh, we present the Improvement Award to Alyssa Herrera and Nia Stewart. Our next set of awards are the Positive Attitude Awards, um, and those awards are given to students that just demonstrate the daily joy of our Lord um, as they go throughout their day, um, even on their, on their best of days and on their worst of days. And we just would like to recognize uh, some 6th, 7th, and 8th graders with the Positive Attitude Award. Um, our Positive Attitude Award in 8th grade, we have Kendall Garrett and Noah Beyer. We also have two positive attitude awards for seventh grade. Uh, fortunately, Piper Ustra is not able to be here today. Um, but my man, Abbott Nicholas, come on up. You did a great job this year. Um, very positive attitude. You want <clears throat> For sixth grade, um, the Positive Attitude Award goes to two students who always came into the classroom positive and helpful and very respectful. Um, and they are Stella Taylor and Rosemond Antoine. Our next award are the Good Samaritan Awards. Uh, we provide these awards for students who, um, who go ahead and, and, and help other people, uh, sometimes without knowing that they're not going to be noticed and other times um, offering, uh, offering those things out and, and offering to help teachers and, and classmates. In eighth grade, we are honoring um, Kaylin Smith and Ivan Chow. All right, and for seventh grade, we have two students as well. Um, Alana Martinez and Hudson Fuller. You guys can come up here as well. And uh, for sixth grade, the Good Samaritan Award goes to Chloe Warshower and Carson Spence.
right, now we have an improvement award. Um, the next award goes to the student who showed the most improvement during the school year. This child has grown tremendously socially and academically these past two years in middle school. And as a teacher, this is honestly one of the most rewarding things to see is personal growth in your students. Uh, this, award, this award was a unanimous decision between all of the middle school teachers. As each of us saw the gains you made throughout the school year, we are so incredibly proud of you, Chase Carbone, for the growth that you have done. The President's Education Awards are the next uh, category, and there are two of them, uh, two categories. First of all, the Education Achievement Award, um, and then the Education Excellence. The Education Achievement Award is given to students in eighth grade that have at least a B average in their subjects. Um, and the following students, please come forward. Maylee Allward, Noah Beyer, Bryce Booker, Olivia Carlson, Sarah Lynn Cooper, Kendall Garrett, Alyssa Herrera, Alyssa McGinnis, Tony McEntee, Nia Stewart, and Aaron Woods. Congratulations. The uh, next award, again, is a President's Education Award and is given to eighth grade students that have a B plus average in their subjects and have scored in the 85th percentile in either math or reading while taking our MAP testing, which is our standardized test program. The following eighth graders have, have earned this award. Ivan Chow, Noah Hammock, Bella Liparota, Brady Moxham, uh, Dio Ortiz, Avon Ray, Kaylin Smith, and Layla Stilinski. Yep. 
Congratulations, all of you. I wanted to close out today by saying thank you for joining us. Um, and I want to leave you one more time with our theme verse for the year, uh, which states, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. This is the most important part, not the most important, but another important part, especially for our eighth graders. So listen up. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. No matter where you go, no matter where he leads, he is always walking alongside of you and will continue to guide you. Please continue to seek God, follow him, serve him, and share what he has and continues to do for you as well as others. And as you go out and share the gospel, know that you have a Lord who loves you and who will take care of you. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a great summer. Blessings. Yeah, good luck. Third grade, you can go. Third and fourth grade, you may go. What? I do it all the time. <laughs>